Hello everybody, this is KXL Radio, AM 1230, and now a remote, very remote, high school football update from Mickey Dale. Mickey, where are you and what do you have for us this week? We're in Mead, Kansas, which is about 45 miles northeast of Liberal, Kansas, or three hours west of Wichita, Kansas. So, yeah, we're in a remote spot. Our son, Jonathan, who did football games as my color man for eight years over the past, is now a pastor at Countryside Bible Church in Mead, Kansas. So that's where our remote is today and uh, just outside of his office in downtown Mead, Kansas. So, yeah. Had a great game last Friday night. For you listened to it on KXO, and the Tigers came out just roaring, opening up their game uh, with a kickoff return for a touchdown. They now have an unblemished 8-0 record with a 48-6 victory over the Clexico Bulldogs. Tigers jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead before they ever took an offensive snap to run their record in IBL play now to 2 and 0. And as I mentioned, the Tigers open with a thrilling 98-yard kickoff return by Darren Wesso. Wessel later had a rushing touchdown as well of 44 yards and would end up the game with 108 yards rushing. That gives him now seven consecutive games with at least 100 yards rushing in it. The freshman has now scored 15 touchdowns in four different ways, rushing, receiving, a punt return, and now a kickoff return. He is it's amazing. Imperial added to their lead a little over three minutes later as Brandon Felix blocked a Calexico punt and A.J. Arispe recovered in the end zone for the score. That would make it 14 to nothing. And that is his second, for Arispe, it's his second fumble recovery for touchdown this year. And the Tigers had still yet to snap the ball on offense. They're up 14 nothing. When they did, Rashad Robinson took a handoff from quarterback Jade Nayella and uh, he would then rumble on 61 yards for the touchdown, giving Imperial a 21-0 lead at the 7-16 mark of the first quarter. Robinson would later have a 53-yard touchdown gallop and went end up with 117 yards on just three carries. He has now rushed for over 100 yards in each of his last three games with the Tigers. The Bulldogs got on the scoreboard on their next possession, three plays after a fumble recovery by Luis Vasquez, who played a great game defensively for the Bulldogs. Arat Silva got the option pitch from quarterback Israel Ruiz and sprinted six yards for the score. Missed conversion gave the Tigers a 21-6 lead with 319 left of the first quarter, but still enough time for the Tigers to score again as Robinson would get a second touchdown in the opening period at the 119 mark of the first quarter as he broke tackles to go 53 yards for the score to make it 28 to six Tigers after 12 minutes of play. Imperial Isaiah Perez then picked off a Bulldog pass with 846 left in the first half and raced 42 yards for the touchdown. That's the third pick six by the Tigers defense this season. That increased the Tigers lead to 35 to six after one of four one after touchdown kicks by sophomore Jonathan Cruz. Robinson would increase the lead to 41-6 with less than a minute remaining in a half with a sparkling 74-yard run after receiving a pass from Ayala. It gives him three touchdowns on the night. Wessa would close out the scoring with a 44-yard touchdown run in the third quarter, giving him 11 rushing scores this season. Now, defensively, along with the wrist-based fumble recovery touchdown and Perez's pick six, Samuel Rubacaba, Danny Esquivez, and Noah Larios recorded sacks among the 21 different Tigers that were in on tackles. Pretty remarkable as the Tigers pretty well clearing the bench on offense and defense in that ballgame. The Tigers are now, as we mentioned, 2-0 and in IVL action, and we'll have this week off. That's why we're in Kansas to visit our grandkids and our son and his wife before hosting Brawley on October 18th. The Bulldogs are now 4-3 and three overall and 0-2 and in IVL and will be at Central on Friday. And speaking of Central, the Spartans won their fourth consecutive El Centro City Championship by defeating Southwest 51-6 at Cal Jones Field last Thursday, game heard on KXO. Quarterback Luis Jimenez was 7 for 7, passing for 106 yards with a touchdown pass to Angel Vasquez for Central. Nico Viesco rushed for 69 yards and had a pair of touchdowns. Nathan Orozco had a 14 yard touchdown run for Central, with Emiliano Morales adding a 13 yard score and Fidel Camarena scoring from 12 yards down for the Spartans. And Elijah Sampson 
opened the scoring for Central with a fumble recovery in the end zone for Central. Southwest scored in the final minute of the game on an 11-yard touchdown pass from Alex Garcia to Joel Zapata. The Spartans are now 6-2 and two overall, 1-1 one and one in IVL play, and set to host Calexico on Friday. Southwest will travel to Brawley to continue IVL play on Friday. And speaking of the Wildcats, they were in quite a tussle last week. It was a battle of unbeatens as they went into San Diego to play University City, and the Centurions came away with a 21-13 victory. The Wildcats showed some fight in the second half. They came back from a 21-0 halftime deficit on the road to score a pair of touchdowns, but came up just one touchdown short. Wildcat quarterback Matthew Gutierrez rushed for a touchdown and went over the 1,000-yard passing mark in 2024, getting Sergio Garcia for his 17th touchdown pass of the season. And for Garcia, that was his eighth touchdown reception of this year. The 6-1 and one Wildcats returned to IBL play Friday, as we mentioned, hosting Southwest. There was one game at Desert League play last week. Vincent Memorial with Palo Verde 21-6. Scott quarterback Patricio Carranza threw three touchdown passes, two to Diego Cisneros and one to Joe Cervantes to give Vincent Memorial an early league lead. Lucio Ascolani led the defense with an amazing 20 tackles in the game and caused two fumbles. The Scots are now 5-1 and one on the season, 1-0 and oh at league, and they're meeting up the Hopeville Vikings, which may be the game of the week, as they'll square off on Thursday at Ward Field in Calexico against unbeaten Hopeville, who had the week off, and that should be quite a game. The Yellow Jackets, meanwhile, dropped a 2-6 and six overall, and they're 0-1 in league, and they host Calipatria on Friday. The Hornets, meanwhile, return to action after a two-week break, Blasting Victory Christian Academy 60 to 20 in Chula Vista. Quarterback Dominic Hawk, again, just amazing, ran for four touchdowns, threw for two others to lead the Hornets. He also returned a punt 38 yards for a touchdown for good measure. Juan Perez scored a rushing touchdown and caught three passes for 130 yards and an 80 yard touchdown pass. Oscar Lopez scored on a 42-yard hawk aerial and recovered a fumble on defense. He also recorded the sack along with Angel Virgin, also Jordan Potter and Jaden Lopez. Perez and Aiden Zambrano intercepted passes for the Hornets' defense. For Hawk, the four scores that he had, rushing gives him 20 on the season and 22 now in total. And 501 Calipatries are mentioned of heading east to go to Blythe to take on the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets in Desert League play as they open in that. So that's pretty much our review of the week. And as we mentioned, the Tigers have this week off. They will be in Brawley next Friday night. That will be a, a huge game to determine who will be the Imperial Valley League champion. So we're looking forward to that one, but we are enjoying the grandkids and kids. Well, that's great. And <clears throat> I would encourage people to call KXO Radio and request Greased Lightning for Mr. Hueso. Of the Imperial Tigers. Yes. Oh, indeed. I'll tell you, just watching him, and he, you know, we mentioned earlier this season that he had two touchdowns called back on consecutive plays uh, early in the season for Imperial. And the same game had another one called back on, on penalties. And the other night, he also had two touchdowns called back on penalties. They had a 44 yarder, was over 100 yards again. Uh, now for the seventh time in a row, and he has just been amazing. And then to get the kickoff return to start the game off, that 98-yarder, that's the second longest in Imperial High School history. So, yeah, just watching him out there is just amazing. If you haven't been able to get out to watch him play, we encourage you to do so. But if not, make sure to tune us in, and we'll tell you all about it. Well, yeah, let's be proud of Brawley. They represented very well against the University City. All they right. do, and Brawley's beaten <clears throat> Bob Raleigh's beaten Imperial the last eight years in a row. So uh, the Tigers earlier this season broke an eight-game losing streak to the Central Spartans. So they'll be out to try to do that again next week against right. Raleigh. Well, Mickey, thanks for caring about us and reaching out from, let's just say you're in Liberty, Kansas, because it's more interesting. And uh, it's, we'll, it's close, we'll yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in need with we're in need, the home of the Buffaloes, and on Friday night, I can't stay away from high school football. So we're going to be in Spearville, Kansas, as the Meat Buffaloes take on the Lancers of Spearville High, and it's an eight-man game. First time in my life I've seen one, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's Mickey Dale.
from Kansas, <laughs> giving us our Imperial Valley and Desert League high school football recaps and updates of what's on the horizon. Thank you. You bet. Thanks.